CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on September 23rd, 2024. I'm Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with provisions in state law for remote participation in public meetings. I will now confirm that all members and staff are present and can hear me. Um, and I'm just going to check with this with one of our members uh, tonight and then ask everybody else to introduce themselves. Uh, Eric Helmuth, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you, sir. OK. And if could ask if everybody else introduce themselves for the, uh, for the public. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Diane Mahan. Leonard Diggins. James Feeney. Michael Cunningham, Town Council. Ashley Miller. Great, thank you. Before we begin, please note the following. This meeting is being conducted in the select board chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcasted on ACMI. People wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. People participating either in person or by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name and place of residence in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board agendas and minutes page. If technical difficulties sever the remote connection to one or more participants and efforts to reconnect within a reasonable time are unsuccessful, the in-person meeting will continue at the discretion of the chair provided that a quorum of the board is physically present. Zoom participants are encouraged to retain the phone number provided in their confirmation email for a backup audio connection to the meeting. There will be an opportunity for public comment at tonight's meeting during the open forum uh, portion. If you're attending by Zoom and want to participate at that time, please raise your hand when I announce that public comment is open. And finally, because one member of this board is not is participating remotely, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. We have 17 agenda items this evening. It's the first night of fall, first meeting of the fall. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done. And with that, I will move on to item two, permission to plant daffodils on town properties. Beth Locke, Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce. Ms. Locke. Hello. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, so you have before you a letter um, that we submitted a week ago uh, requesting permission to plant approximately 4,500 daffodils on town properties. The chamber is looking to um, do a beautification project that also coincides with the reenactment um, of April 2025, uh, the Battle of Monotomy reenactment. And over the course of that, the, the root of that reenactment, we're looking to plant approximately 10,000 bulbs on a combination of town uh, and private property. So uh, the request before you outlines specific locations on um, the route that are our town properties. And we hope that this will be something that all residents will enjoy. And it will, uh, because the daffodil bulbs are perennials, they're something that will come back year after year um, for, for both enjoyment and, and the beautification of our business districts, which is why it's something that specifically the chamber is interested in. Great. No, th th thank you. It looks like a, an exciting project. Any uh, motions, questions? Mr. Diggins? Well, motion to approve. I mean, it's a great idea, Ms. Locke, I mean, as usual. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Great. Okay. Any further comment? All right. On a motion for approval by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Uh, Attorney Cunningham, if you don't mind doing the roll. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Unanimous right. vote. Thank, Thank you, you very all much. very much. Okay. Okay. Moving on to the consent agenda, a number of items here. Item three, minutes of meeting, August 19th, 2024. Item four, 
acceptance of Mass DOT shared streets and spaces grant funds. Item five, acceptance of Boston MPO Blue Bikes grant funds and approval of Arlington Watertown MOA. Item six, vote authorizing in-person early voting and police details for the state and federal election to be held on November 5th, 2024. Item seven in our two requests for contractor drain layer licenses. Item eight is a request for a special one day beer and wine license on October 27th, 2024 at the Ed Burns Rink for the Dan Kelly Foundation Halloween Skate and Beer Garden. Item nine is a request for a special one day beer and wine license on September 28th, 2024 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. And item 10 is a request for a special one day beer and wine license on October 13th, 2024 at the community center for a private event. Uh, turn to the board. Second. Second. All right, any comments, questions? Okay, so on a motion for approval. Uh, well, it, it was, just a, it was yep. just a quick comment to say how excited I am about the, um, the Broadway um, redesign um, uh, grant that we're getting. You know, so is that still listed here? You know, I thought I read it here. You know, unless it's it may, a, may have been a reference somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. You know, well, well, maybe it's coming. You know. So never mind. I withdraw that. I'm all set. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, okay. So on a motion for approval by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Unanimous vote. Great. Thank you. All right. Moving right along, item 11, appointments for the ACAC, ACAC Grants Committee, formerly the Arlington Cultural Council. Um, and um, while we're waiting, we must have a number of people who are here through Zoom. Um, just a brief for the public's benefit, the ACAC Grants Committee exists to support public programs in our community that promote access, education, diversity, and excellence in the arts humanities and interpretive sciences. This is one of those committees where there's an intersection between our town bylaws and state law. Um, the grants committee is part of the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. It's one of the action committees. It also represents statewide as our Arlington Cultural Council and pursuant to state law, the appointing authority is the select board. So we have, I believe, six appointments this evening, Eric Stang, Sandra Mastajo, Amy Markoff Wyand, Jacqueline Houghton, Parmit Kraza, and Howard Herman. And I believe one is one member here this evening, or okay. Yeah, if you want to come up and is everybody else by Zoom, Ms. Mar? It looks like there's maybe a handful, but not all. Okay. That's all right. So let's why don't we start here? If you Thank could you. just introduce yourself and, and t uh, just tell us why you're interested in serving. Okay, so I'm Parmit Singh, okay, uh, and um, I work in Dana Farber Cancer Institute as a senior scientist, and um, I recently moved to Pleasant District, Arlington, and I am, have been writing poetry and short stories um, when I was in high school, but after coming to Boston, I started writing in English also to participate here open mic. So I have submitted my CV, which tells my activity as a poet. So I wanted to join this grant cultural things because I have some idea regarding poetry. I want to do some activity. So I wanted to learn more. So I attended last two meeting and then they asked me that there are vacancy and if you want to join, so I express my interest. Great, well, they will thank you for your interest. Uh, I turn to board members. Mr. Diggins. And I'd like to motion, uh, make a motion to approve. And, and also to let you know the, that we're looking for a poet laureate. Okay. Just want to plant the seed. You know, Thank you. So, so think Thanks. about it, because you've done a lot. You know, and, and, and so I haven't um, really looked at it a lot, but, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's great. So thank you. Thanks. Okay. We're second. second. Okay, and second by Mr. Hurd. Any further questions? Okay, so on a motion for approval by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Cunningham? Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Unanimous, unanimous approval. Great. Congratulations. And thank, you, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay. 
and we'll see. There's two members, Eric Stange. You would like to go first. Okay, great. Good evening. Yeah, if you could just introduce yourself to the board and tell us why you're interested in serving. Sorry, who were you asking for? I couldn't quite hear it. Sure, you know, if you could just introduce yourself and just let us know why, um, a little about yourself and why you're interested in serving on the Grants Committee. Okay, my name is Eric Stange. I'm a 30 plus uh, years resident of Arlington and uh, I'm a documentary filmmaker by profession. So I've had many years of applying for grants and have been on other grants committees as well over the years. But I, I was a long time uh, board member of the Arlington Center for the Arts as well. So I'm pretty familiar with the local arts scene and uh, I'm now um, eager to take part in the grants committee for the um, Arts and, and Culture Commission. I feel like there's uh, really important and interesting art going on in Arlington and in all sorts of ways. And I'd love to be part of helping make more of it happen. Great. Thank, thank you for your interest, Mr. Stange. Uh, any questions, motions from the board? Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Stange, for applying. I was delighted to see that your name uh, was on the list. As you know, I am familiar with your work, and uh, the public may not know that that uh, our applicants' documentaries are, are of national repute. They've appeared on PBS and other um, venues, and I think the experience that he talks about uh, with, with uh, arts governance at, and also as a creator will be really valuable. So thank you for serving, and I would like to move approval. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Second. Any, any I want to second everything today. <laughs> <laughs> any other uh, comments, questions? Okay, so on a, a motion for approval by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Unanimous approval. Okay, congratulations and thank you again. No, well, thank you very much. I can't see who is uh, next here, so. It's um, Jacqueline Houghton. Houghton. Okay. Yeah, if you could introduce yourself and uh, tell us about your interest in serving. Sure thing. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Houghton. I moved to Arlington at the start of 2022. Uh, I'm a journalist and an editor. Um, I've, my beat has primarily been arts and culture. Um, I worked at the Boston Phoenix and the Improper Bostonian and a number of other publications. Uh, currently, I'm a senior editor at the Boston Art Review, uh, which covers, um, it's dedicated to elevating diverse perspectives on contemporary art uh, in Boston and throughout New England. Um, I'm also a senior copy editor at Candlewick Press, uh, which publishes children's books from board books up to uh, young adult novels and nonfiction. Um, I've always been passionate about the arts. Um, ever since I was a kid, I was lucky to get to go to a lot of art classes and get involved in community theater um, and have a family that's always been involved in the arts. Uh, my husband's a musician. Um, and yeah, and so arts have always been a big part of my life and I, I'd love to uh, have a chance to get uh, more involved in the, the community here in Arlington um, and help you know support uh, local artists and bring um, dynamic cultural programming here. So thanks. Great. No, thank, thank, thank you very much, and thank you for sharing uh, all your impressive experience uh, with this as well. Uh, Mr. Hurd? Move approval. Okay, Mr. Diggins? Second. Okay, any other questions, comments? Uh, seeing none. On a motion for approval by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Unanimous approval. Great. Congratulations and thank you again for your willingness to serve. Thank you all so much. Do we have anybody else? Or? Unfortunately, there's no one else logged into the Zoom. Okay. All right. I think this group meets fairly regularly. I think we will be meeting again before their next meeting. I, I want to say their next meeting is sometime in the middle of October. These are initial appointments, so I think consistent with our practice, um, we will notify the other applicants and put them on for a future agenda. Yeah, and I do know uh, two of them, 
told me last week that there's something going on at the high school tonight, okay. and they're high school parents, and they were going to try to um, zoom in. Okay. Um, I believe it was um, Sandra and Amy. I'll keep an eye out. And okay. And if it does, we'll yeah. leave that open. Okay. okay. Great. Thank, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. No, no. Thank you for that. Uh, okay. Next is open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or a request. There is no one in the chambers uh, to speak before us. Is there anybody on Zoom? Seeing no hands raised, Mr. Chair. Okay, that concludes open forum for this evening. Um, item 12, discussion and approval, town manager select board goals. Um, for this, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Feeney uh, to begin the discussion and, and uh, to review the uh, materials he's provided to us. Mr. Feeney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So as the board knows, we met on August 5th in the town manager's conference room for approximately uh, two and a half hours to go through at length and in detail uh, a number of goals that resulted the culmination of that work is the uh, sheet that was provided with your materials for this evening's meeting uh, it's a similar format to that which you've seen before the most recent version of which had been for fiscal years 20 th 22 through 23 uh, I do want to note that while the format is similar I did collapse what had been eight categories into six uh, moving sort of the organizational line item into the first uh, general category, meaning it now reads organizational, strategic, and long-range financial planning, and also energy and energy efficiency and sustainability, which really is now baked into everything we do, is now falling within capital projects and maintenance where we make uh, those particular investments. So uh, in sum, we, you know, what had been... Uh, 70 about 77 rows of data the last time we saw it has been shortened to 64 rows of data uh, not necessarily indicative of there being less work uh, to be done but it was the result of simply removing items which i felt were done as a matter of course uh, things such as you know goals to maximize grant funding or ensuring the most productive and efficient delivery of services or continuing promotion of well-established programs such as Arlington Community Education, those things that have sort of become our work and, and must be done as a matter of course. I felt like we're not uh, necessarily things that should be uh, singled out in this document, but instead my style was for the goals to be written in a manner that was specific, concrete, and actionable. So uh, that is the document that was before the board. Uh, to review the sort of large categories with which our joint goals will fit in are organizational, strategic, and long-range financial planning, capital projects and maintenance, community planning and development, land use and economic development, transportation and planning, public communications, customer service, and resident engagement, and as well as finally information technology so you know the board does have a copy of the goals and I certainly look forward to your feedback tonight I did want to call out a few things that have transpired since we met since I've generated this document and where we are today so under the first uh, category the goal and you'll notice I sort of have uh, a summary of each goal in a word or two so that it's more easily navigable. Uh, under financial policies, obviously, we are striving to update and, in, and expand our internal controls, but also just to capture for posterity all of our existing financial policies and practices, which have been getting sort of, you know, passed on from one management team to another or from one staff member to another during transitions. What we've seen is sometimes if we don't document that information clearly and in a manner that uh, can sort of live on, uh, we may find ourselves in a position when key personnel leave that we lose a lot of institutional knowledge. 
So with respect to that goal, uh, we did pursue and were awarded a $35,000 uh, community compact best practices grant. We did just receive notification from the Lieutenant Governor on that front, and that comes in through the Department of Revenue Division of Local Services. Uh, so we will be sort of working with a uh, third, party, third party, likely uh, the UMass Collins Center or a consultant of that nature to help us prepare uh, you know, those financial policies in writing so that we have uh, both a record that will last with the town but also to help create accountability and create documents that will help with onboarding and training new staff. Can I? Um, Do you want to wait to the end? Yeah, or? why don't we wait okay. until, until sure. yeah. That was one of my, okay, keep, I'll keep going. Okay. Uh, under capital projects and maintenance, the zero emission vehicle policy that this board had uh, voted to support, we uh, are obviously trying to operationalize that. We fast-tracked trying to get that in place for the current capital planning cycle that we're in, and we were able to, with uh, the help of Ms. Talia Fox, generate uh, a request form and a flow chart, as well as provide copy of that policy to all department heads so that we could attempt to operationalize it in this capital planning cycle and not have to wait uh, for next year. Uh, something I will note, uh, under community planning and development, land use and economic development. Uh, some of these things that the board is well aware of, but I just want to call them out. Under uh, host community agreements, uh, we had talked about reviewing the existing host community agreements for compliance uh, with current terms of the agreements, uh, but also updating with respect to Cannabis Control Commission regulations. Uh, coincidentally, that is also an item of update for uh, tonight's meeting following uh, last week's joint meeting with the Redevelopment Board. Uh, similarly, uh, with respect to the Alewife Brook, sort of it was a goal to work with DCR on the Alewife Greenway and, you know, much to our surprise and much to the credit of DCR, they were out uh, very recently and performed a pretty significant cleanup of the waterway and removing a lot of uh, you know, what I would call blockages or things that may uh, have created a dam, for a lack of a better word, may have contributed to flooding on occasion. So uh, that was important progress, but with respect to the CSO uh, discharges, you know, this board did uh, in its last meeting uh, finalize through the chair some letters to be sent to both the MBTA as well as the governor and our various, you know, our legislative delegations at different levels. So, you know, there's already progress on some of those fronts. Uh, and one uh, item that I'll call out that was not necessarily discussed at our uh, joint meeting on August 5th was uh, the item in the last section there for economic development, that is the alcohol regulations, and to consider if any existing alcohol licensing policies warrant updates or revisions to aid uh, economic development here locally. I uh, took the liberty of adding that following the uh, joint meeting with the Redevelopment Board. Uh, following our uh, discussion uh, about parking at our uh, goal setting meeting, I know we discussed, though we hadn't necessarily arrived on exactly what other parking policies beyond overnight parking uh, we may address, but I did want to call out and provide an item called parking policy, and it's written somewhat generally just to consider if any other existing parking policies or regs warrant updates or revisions. And uh, in that same section, with respect to special speed regulations, again, that was something that, you know, we had talked about, but lo and behold, the board has already uh, seen and voted on that item, and we are just about uh, done with drafting a letter that would be sent on the board's uh, behalf to MassDOT to start that process of rescinding uh, the special speed regulations on Park Ave and Broadway. Uh, and then finally, the, the other thing that I would provide an update on this evening is 
under information technology, obviously there is a goal uh, with respect to cybersecurity. Uh, and I would just report that obviously the board is aware that we did get a grant through the Office of Municipal and School Technology uh, to pursue cybersecurity awareness training and education for all users in the organization. We are making that uh, mandatory and that program will run through December of this year. We also separately uh, have already acquired a tool that will allow us to continue that training on an ongoing basis because employees change over time, but also the threats evolve and adapt over time. So uh, we also, you know, taking that the next step further, we, you know, we're awarded a separate grant already uh, for, again, through the Office of Municipal and School Technology to update a number of our Office 365 licenses to the highest uh, government level, which will provide for more uh, functionality and will allow us to enable uh, two-factor or multi-factor authentication uh, for all users. And in those instances where that may not be possible, uh, that grant funding of just shy of $100,000 will also allow, uh, allow us to purchase FOBs for users that may not have uh, a town-provided device but still have a town account. Uh, and that we did just apply for, again, from the Commonwealth, uh, you know, cybersecurity being uh, a big issue for municipalities and state agencies. The Commonwealth is making a lot of grant funding available. We did just apply for what is called a cybersecurity health check. Uh, specifically, we're looking for penetration testing to identify any uh, remaining vulnerabilities in our network. Uh, we did apply for that uh, about two weeks ago and applications are reviewed and approved on a rolling basis. So we expect to hear uh, back in uh, the month of October and be able to get that work uh, underway shortly thereafter. So just wanted to provide those updates in particular to items that we had talked about, but since, since then progress has already been made either by staff or by uh, the board. Thank you very much, Mr. Feeney, and, and uh, thank you for that summary and going through what we had discussed. And as Mr. Feeney said, we met on August 5th. It was a discussion. There were no votes taken that evening. Mr. Feeney had developed the goals. Uh, we made some um, individual members uh, had, had some various comments, and it was always understood that this would be coming back to the board, presented as it is tonight, for discussion and potential approval. So with that, I'll open it up to board members for any comments or questions. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to Housekeeping wise, move approval of the town manager select board goals. Um, and I'll try to be brief. Um, I know we did spend two and a half hours, um, but they were well spent. Oh. <laughs> it was a blast. It was a blast. Well, you know me and my allergies, but I was okay. Um, and just very briefly on the um, all but one uh, apply to the town manager and one or two fold into with the chair. Um, on the um, financial policies, I was gonna call out the, the grant that um, you received, the town received, and, and say kudos um, for getting that. And I will say, being the ancient board member, well, since you know, time ad finitum, being on the board, under the um, goal of the controls manual in the town and school facet of it. Previously, that was not successful. I, I always felt very frustrated that we were doing things on the town side, but they didn't parlay over to the school side. Um, and that had to do with previous superintendents and CFOs and et cetera. But um, I, I think what I got from the, the town manager was that um, you've already had conversations with Dr. Holman, the school superintendent, and someone was just coming on board in the financial aspect. So if you could just reaffirm that you see in your tenure as town manager what that town and school, because to me if it's just like we've done in the past, and I don't mean to be negative, that you know we do everything on the town side, it's not merit on the school side, it really doesn't get us to exactly where we want to go. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Yeah, I would be happy to reiterate that I have discussed this with the superintendent. I think both the superintendent and I have lived through 
you know, sort of recent transition with key personnel on the, uh, you know, sort of the financial sides of each respective shop. So that pr puts us both in a strong position to want to do this and to codify things and unify things as we've had to work through uh, various issues as they arise. So I would say that, you know, why I'm hopeful here that perhaps it might be different than your past experience is just, you know, if key staff members similarly situated and uh, similarly eager to, you know, document these things and uh, look for efficiencies. I will say we've already changed a number of uh, processes and workflows uh, via a more robust munis that we have this updated version of. And those things we're doing are applying organization wide uh, without issue. So that gives me promise that, uh, you know, that, that similar outcome will be achieved. Mm -hmm. And I feel positive about that also. It always frustrated me that. The town side had munis that really needed to be updated. The school sky didn't. We could, but it seems like we're going in that direction, and and that's a very good thing. And on the uh, columbarium, we're going to hear about that more in the future if there is something that can sort of evolve from that. But I, um, in terms of whether it's a, a more intense capital project, or if that's not something that's a go, if there's something else that needs to come out of. Um, Mount Pleasant. Yeah, so I would say where we're at now, and we have some work underway actively right now at the Columbarium, and what we're really trying to do is sort of activate the space on the backside of the existing Columbarium, but also make it uh, a more attractive place for folks to visit and, you know, have a brief respite with their loved ones. So, you know, we've been undertaking some cosmetic changes, but we actually just put in a brand new bench. Uh, it was last week. It's a nice curved radius bench with some decorative concrete. We've done a new planting uh, program there with the approval of the Conservation Commission. We have a new pathway underway. So we're hopeful that if we're able to now start selling what we call niches, the niches on the backside of that columbarium, and this is, you know, we can ultimately achieve the success that we hope to achieve with phase one, we do have a longer term plan for along that pathway to the existing columbarium at the backside. The cemetery commission already has sort of a master plan for where other installations may go in that area, right, for more sort of what I'd call, you know, high density burials. So I think that, that you know, we have a good plan, sort of a good master plan, but what we've been trying to do is fine tune and operationalize the existing uh, build out that is there and try to make the most of it so that we know that our we can achieve uh, sort of more things in the future. Okay, and then if I could ask the chair on the um, double polls, which is so one of the solely select board goals, um, as we move forward, um, and especially where this has been your ballywick um, and others, I'm not, but in, in terms of the current board configuration, just moving forward, um, whether um, we need to discuss a policy going forward in terms of we can track it, we can report it to DPU, um, but, um, in, and I don't know if you want to talk about this tonight, but one of the things I was wondering is if we need to either have a policy or discuss possibly having a policy regarding when we do get those reports, when we do get requests from the utilities, is there something we should have like a means test? Uh, I don't know if you want to speak to that or if you want to say yes, I'm going to. Yeah, and, and, and I think one of the things is Verizon has primary responsibility in Arlington and I know every time they come before us, I, I have it in my head, okay, l let's bring it up. They haven't been before us that, that much recently, but I, I do think it, it's something that we will track with them. And, and we talked about this a few years ago. I think the only member who might not have been at the, on the board at that time was Mr. Helmuth, where we did actually say if it gets to a point where we're not comfortable with the increase or the reduction in the number of double polls, um, depending on what the ask is, we might make that conditional on seeing some more progress. And I think that's maybe what you're getting at in terms of that, that direct conduct, uh, contact. Um, Mr. Feeney and I have discussed having a meeting with Verizon, and, and I'd like to have some sort of audit 
or review about it might be too strong a word with the rise in to verify the numbers because I, I have pointed out several times polls that aren't on the list mm -hmm. and I pointed out the last meeting there was a double poll from 2014 on what you should have and I've driven down what you should have I don't know where it is so that may have been removed and not taken off so that type of thing cutting both ways but but certainly um, as long as I'm on the board I certainly would want to have a lot of contact and see that number continue to go down okay thank you and then my last two um One's more of a comment and the other one is sort of a quick answer question of two th things combined. Um, trash and recycling, I know that the town manager and his staff are really in the thick of it in terms of um, bids have come in and they're, they're evaluating them. Um, but um, I anticipate when we get to the next landmark critical step in the process, um, in considering the override doesn't have any relief for us there, that that's going to be something we, it's going to be a big, bigger number, it's bigger, scarier number, um, and not to relive the past, but um, when I was on long range planning, there were conversations around that, and it is what it is. But I guess I would ask the town manager, um, where do you see when that gets to the resolution in terms of we have a sense of what the number will be for, I don't know if it's trash and recycling or waste and recycling, do you anticipate it will start with a discussion at long range planning? It will start at a discussion, of course at a department heads meeting, but or will it start with the board or somewhere else? Because I just want to make sure, because I know that's going to be a big one. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Obviously we are proceeding through that process now and still trying to get a firm understanding of the exact costs. There are certainly a series of variables uh, in play where it's not uh, like most of our other bids where you just get some base contract value and you know that's that because there is sort of a sliding scale with service levels is all as well as a number of different service options and not all vendors are interested in provided providing each and every service option so it is certainly you know, one of the more uh, complex bid reviews I've been through. You know, I'm hopeful that, uh, you know, within the next, uh, what I would say is two to three weeks, we probably have a bit more clarity on what our future program is going to look like. Uh, and with respect to cost, it's, it's certainly going to be uh, more costly than our current contract that has insulated us from a number of aspects, including simply the cost of processing single stream recycling, right? Our waste hauler has always owned our recycling stream. Now we will be paying uh, by the ton to have that uh, single recycling stream processed. And that processing fee will actually be more costly than it is for us to dispose of our municipal solid waste uh, by ton. So, you know, setting aside the service itself being more expensive, just being responsible for that cost is going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars that we have not incurred that expense before. So in all likelihood, it would, would also be uh, an appropriate discussion for the long range planning committee as well, given that as well as this board, given that we have certain uh, commitments and expenditure caps placed on our finances that may place, you know, significant strain on our ability to deliver the level of service that our rest residents, you know, deserve and are accustomed to. Okay. And then um, my last point, we already spoke about cybersecurity. Um, one of the things that um, I've had conversations with the town manager and the rest of us have that I'm encouraged by is um, uh, Sometimes it's frustrating for me in the past, not currently, um, with the current manager and department heads that we belong to different organizations and I, don't, I f felt like in the past we weren't necessarily getting all our bang for our buck in terms of um, uh, utilization uh, for membership for those uh, committees or organizations or societies. Um, but um, I've been very impressed and pleased um, not just around the OMST cybersecurity grant, which I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that, but um, one of the things I felt that we weren't really taking advantage of is through Powers and Sullivan, 
um, with now Markham LLP, their longtime uh, president, Jeffrey Weiner, since 1981, he's stepping down now, but um, Markham also, um, uh, along with CLA, who we've also engaged um, in, in terms of cybersecurity and, and some other venues, um, they, they do have opportunities, and I went in to meet with a manager expecting that I'm going to bring up things that we probably could take advantage of and we're not, but I was very pleased to hear that, you know, Markham, which is now the overseer umbrella of our Powers and Sullivan outside audit as well as CLA, we are um, exploring and taking advantage of those opportunities. That will be my last point. I don't know if you want to speak to any of that or if you want to, um, but because um, I feel like, you know, if they're there and they're our consultants and we're paying to be in the organizations, you know, why not take advantage of that? And I just want to note that the town manager, Mr. Feeney, um, I don't know, if, maybe if you can give a sentence or two on Markham and or CLA, and that will be it for me. Sure. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. What I would say is, you know, Markham, who acquired Powers and Sullivan, the town's longtime uh, third-party auditor, has uh, begun the audit of, uh, you know, the past fiscal year, and as a part of that process, because they do have an information technology division, uh, we have used that opportunity and the resources at their disposal to have sort of a, you know, third-party independent review of the cybersecurity incident that happened here locally, and, you know, we've met with uh, their experts, you know, provided information, have gotten requests for additional information, and we're working on providing that to them. Uh, so that they too feel comfortable with uh, the, the steps that are currently being taken on the town's behalf to protect our information. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Other members? Mr. Hurd? I was just going to follow up on something that the town manager mentioned relative to our goals and our meeting last week is I don't, I, mean, we had, I think we've talked a few times about reviewing our alcohol policy. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if it would be the recommendation to have like a subcommittee of two members and to work with planning and the economic development coordinator to take a look at the policy called the alcohol committee. Maybe we'll come up with something more appropriate. But um, you know, I think we can look at what it is, present it to the board, and you know, talk to local businesses and an Arlington bar hop, if you will, and go through and see what works and what doesn't work. And, you know, because I've spoken to some business owners that love it and some don't like it. And, you know, I know there's a, re a few reasons for businesses that we're looking to bring in town that might warrant a change. So whether it's by subcommittee or we just, you know, put on an agenda item, but I think it would take some some groundwork to get out there and, and talk to some of the businesses to get their input before we kind of move forward. That, 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 thank you, Mr. Hurd. And I was planning on touching on that briefly, too, in, in our later agenda item because it may be something we want to do for the spring, but I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, I was going to let Mr. Uh, Mr. Diggins, would you like to go? Sure, sure. So thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, uh, so I mean, I'm happy you brought that up, Mr. Hurt. I mean, the, the approach to it because I mean, uh, I mean, I love goals. I mean, they're like birthday presents, you know. But the only thing better than goals is accomplishing those goals, you know. And and they're not just going to accomplish themselves. I mean, so we have to have a strategy, I mean, for um, for accomplishing them. And I, you, you laid out one, I mean, for the alcohol policy, and and, and I think hopefully over the. Uh, the next few weeks or so, we can, I mean, those of us who are passionate about some of these, I mean, can I mean, present to our colleagues I mean, what we'd like to do and find out who maybe wants to work with on us on accomplishing those goals I mean, and setting out a plan for, for, them, for, getting, for getting them done. You know? and, and the only other thing I'll add is on the one um, regarding the overrides. I, mean, uh, I, I know that impact tends to have a negative um, connotation to it, you know, but I, mean, I do see, you know, the overrides which are inevitable I mean, as opportunities to have conversations with the community about what 
the community wants. I mean, because I mean, there are lots of things that people would think would make the town I mean, a lot better, but they'll cost a lot more money. You know, I mean, so we just need to have that conversation with people, you know, so that we can get a sense of how to prioritize things, and that can feed into the conversations with long-range planning. Because I think if we can. We can show people that they're really getting a good bang for their buck, I meaning we have a vision I mean, um, uh, to accomplish things or give people what they really want, it might make it easier I mean, to get what we need in the overrides. That's it, thank you. Would, would one of those things be shared vehicle spaces? <laughs> <laughs> for anyone watching at home, you have to rewatch our meeting. It's a possibility. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the only thing I wanted to to uh, add is my appreciation to the town manager for the for the good edit on the document. I think it was a good idea to trim it, trim some of the stuff that, as you say, is just a matter of established good practice year to year. Um, and I think the result of this is a focused document that really makes it easier for us to uh, home in on stuff we want to get done and then as mr diggins say says uh, you make it easier to evaluate whether or not we did um, at the end of the end of the year so thank you for that um, for the public's benefit i just want to um, point out that this document that we're talking about is available on the select board agendas and minutes page as the chair said at the beginning of the meeting and i encourage the public to go uh, do that because there's a been a lot of time and thought that went into that I think it does articulate the vision for um, priorities and, and a good work plan for the coming months. Thank, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. And, and before I make my comments, we we did have a motion for approval by Mrs. Mahan. I'm still waiting for a second. Okay, second by Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Yeah, and I, I, I want to thank Mr. Feeney too. And, and um, we had a discussion early on about this, and I want to commend Mr. Feeney that sometimes when you have a goals document that um, the accomplishments get looked at in terms of evaluation and, and this and that. There are some people who put things in there that are very easy to attain and you, you hit numbers. I appreciate you focusing on substance and, and, and really um, calling this down and, and, and things that we can really try to achieve together. And, and um, that, that I think it has improved the, the document greatly for that and, and just appreciate your incorporating the, um, the, the liquor licenses based on our last conversation. Had that happened before August 5th, we probably would have included it, so we appreciate you you adding that. And, and there is an awful lot in here, um, whether it's transportation projects, new construction projects, financial um, access to, to, to various programs that are all in this goals document. And uh, if approved this, this evening, it will actually be on our front Page, select board page that uh, the public can access. So, um, any other comments, questions? Okay. So, on a, a motion for approval of the town manager select board goals by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd, uh, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, and thank you, Mr. Feeney. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Um, next is item 13, a discussion of town manager evaluation. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, Ms. Marr? I just have one comment that there's a member of the ACAC Grants Committee that's present at the meeting now. I don't know if we want to take sure. them. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, while we're waiting um, for the individual to come up, we will go back to item number 11. Good evening. If, if you could just introduce yourself and, and tell us why you're interested in um, serving on the Grants Committee. Sure, good evening. Can you, can you hear me? I just put in my headphones, so I just want to make sure it's working. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, hello, yes, my, my name is Sandra Mastajo, and um, uh, I'm a longtime resident here in Arlington, and um, I'm, I guess I would just say I'm, you know, an a, a interested citizen of Arlington, and I have served in different capacities and different roles, and this was something that was uh, brought to me by somebody who is currently on the committee, um, and I feel that, you know, with my uh, strength and experience, I, I could bring something to the committee and, um, and help it grow and expand. Um, I've been a past town meeting member, 
Um, I've also served in other areas, so um, I'm very interested in participating in this way. Great. Well, thank you very much for your interest, and uh, I'll turn to board members now. Move approval. Okay. Second. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay. On a motion for approval by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins, uh, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Uh, Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Unanimous Great. approval. Great. Thank, thank you for joining us this evening thank and for your so interest. Thank you so much. I'm so looking forward to working with this committee. Great. And thank you for your work. Certainly. Thank you. All right. Um, I th is anybody else or is that? No, there okay. was. Okay. All right. So we, we will have two. It looks like we have two future appointments um, that we'll work on for the next agenda. Great. All right. Item 13 is a discussion of the town manager evaluation timetable. And this will be brief. I just wanted to update board members. Um, Mr. Feeney's one year anniversary was in August or July 31st would have been the completion of his first year. Um, and we talked about a timetable for the evaluation. I have had some discussions with Ms. Malloy, our Director of Human Resources, and what we anticipate is um, sometime in October, I think, uh, that the process starts with the town manager be, uh, producing a self-evaluation document. We receive that, we make an evaluation, and based on what we've done in the past, we submit our individual evaluations to Ms. Malloy, who produces a compilation, and then we have a public meeting on that. And so in talking to Mr. Feeney and looking at our schedules, I want to be flexible. There's been a lot that has been going on the past few months, but it looks like the initial stage of that process will take place sometime in October. Mr. Feeney, I don't know if you want to add anything to that on the, on the timetable. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I would say that initial submission uh, in just looking at prior timelines would take place in mid-October. Members would likely have approximately one month to complete, right? You would receive your evaluation tools. Many of you have been through this before. Uh, you would return those to the chair who would then work with uh, the director of human resources over the course of approximately two weeks to compile for posting uh, in advance of what will likely be, you know, it's usually a regularly scheduled meeting. I imagine that would be our December 4th meeting. If, if we're on that timeline of uh, a mid-October submission, about a month for review, a few weeks for compilation, that would put us on a timeline for early December. Great. Thank you. Any questions? And Mrs. Mahan? And just for the board and the chair's consideration that when we do have um, the final board meeting on this after we go through the process, if we could also have a discussion and a vote, if we continue with past practice, which I think we should, that this will be the timetable moving forward so that future chairs will know, um, okay, this process needs to start October, so we'll work backwards. Right. Or if board members or somebody else feels it should be something different, but I think we should codify that at the uh, next, the last public meeting. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Mahan. And, and it, it, you're right, this timetable is a little different than former town managers because Mr. Chapdelaine, for example, his contracts were always in the February or March time period, so it was a diff different timetable on the evaluation. Here coming in the summer, it does lend itself to spilling into the, to the fall, but we could discuss that. Thank you. Uh, anything else? All right. Uh, item 14, an update on litigation against ITRAN, Inc. Uh, Mr. Feeney and Attorney Cunningham. Oh. Before I do that, Ms. Mar? <laughs> we have one more I'm member. All right. We're this will, some stragglers. This will be piecemeal. Okay. Um, so with that, <laughs> I will go back to thing. item number 11. But uh, that's good. Well, rolling, uh, rolling approvals here tonight. It's like a college admissions <laughs> process. <or something. laughs> like OMSD grants. <laughs> good evening. That's a car one. Hello? Hi. Yeah, if you could just... Um, just introduce yourself and, and tell us why you're interested in serving on the Grants Committee. Yes, my apologies. I was sitting in the uh, college admissions meeting at the high school until just now. Um, this is Amy Markov, and I'm sorry you would also ask me to comment on my interest in the ACAC Grants Committee. Yes. Yes. Yeah, if you could. Yep. Uh, yes. Well, um, I'm actually just, as I stated in my letter of interest, um, 
I'm a stay-at-home parent. We've been living here in Arlington for about 12 years. Um, I've been very involved in our school communities and specifically in the performing arts community here at the high school and also at Leslie Ellis where my children attend it for some time. Um, my daughter is a senior at this point and I'd love the opportunity to extend that to the town at large more to be able to use those connections and, and expand that interest to the town. Great. Thank, thank you very much. I'm going to turn now to the board for questions, comments, and motions. Mrs. Mahan. I would like to move approval and just the demonstration of you having an event for your child at the high school tonight, but you made sure to get in the car was, and zoom I'm in. Sorry, I was lurking for some time, but every time I checked in, it seemed to be about utilities, so I would duck back in and duck back out. So. No, no, no problem. And you, did, you and um, I believe Sandra mentioned that. You know, well, Sandra was my person that was giving me a heads up, so yeah. <laughs> I just ran out. But I, I do appreciate it, and I did have the opportunity to speak both to both of you at our last meeting when you were going to uh, a, a ECAC like yeah. meeting. So um, I, I joyfully will move approval. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, and a second by Mr. Hurd. Any other questions, comments? Okay. So, in a motion for approval by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. All right. Unan Con unanimous approval. Congratulations, and, and well, I hope the uh, presentation went well tonight at the high school. It's not, <laughs> it's not as stressful a as you think. A lot of information, but thank you. Yeah. Okay. Good luck. Okay, thank you. Have a good night. You too. All right, so now back. Good juggling. You got almost a full committee to, there. Yeah. <laughs> so back to item 14. I, I think I got half of it out, so I'll start over again. Yeah. Uh, an update on litigation against iTron Inc. And uh, Mr. Feeney and Attorney Cunningham will be making that presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This will be uh, a brief presentation, but just wanted to provide the board and I suppose the public. Uh, an update in regards to the 2021 lawsuit, the town through then Deputy Town Council uh, Cunningham brought against iTron Inc., uh, a vendor we use in the provision of our uh, local water utility. So as members are aware, the board authorized, authorized Town Council Cunningham and I during executive session on May 20th of this year to participate in a mediated settlement conference that took place in Dallas, Texas on May 31st. Uh, the mediation did take uh, an entire day, but with the assistance of a retired federal judge, we were able to reach a mutually agreeable resolution. Uh, and obviously based on the specific facts and circumstances of the case, uh, I determined it was in the best interest of the town to resolve what had been an ongoing matter uh, prior to trial. So at this point, we are able to report the receipt of $350,000 as, uh, as a result of that settlement, uh, the check for which was recently received. So I would also like to turn it over to town council, who I will note saw this matter through from beginning to its very end. Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to briefly thank the board for its support, uh, the town manager for the time that he invested in this process the legal department staff and also the Department of Public Works and its staff for their support of the litigation uh, and report that because the funds have been received, uh, stipulation dismissal has been filed and this matter is officially closed uh, with the court. There are no further actions required. Great. Thank, thank, thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Um, any uh, questions or comments from board members? Okay. Um, yeah, and I want to thank you both for the, for the work. And my recollection, Attorney Cunningham, this was one of the first things that you were assigned to um, when, when you began. So it's a, you, you saw it all the way through. And, and congratulations to you and to Mr. Feeney because you get in the middle of litigation and you don't know, especially against a corporation, where it's going to go in terms of discovery and, and what the demands are going to be. So congratulations to both of you for uh, completing this for the town. Okay. Um, next is item 15, an update on the property redemption for 62-64 Brooks Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, wanted to take the opportunity this evening to update uh, the board on the matter of 62-64 Brooks Ave, which is a 
two-family home in East Arlington near the Hardy School. Uh, members may recall this property had fallen into arrears with property taxes uh, starting in 2011. Uh, at our January 8th meeting of this year, uh, the board did vote to provide the opportunity for the prior owner to redeem the property. Uh, that vote resulted in the homeowner uh, conducting a private sale to a third party developer. As a result of that sale, uh, the town was paid a total of $345,000. $539.62 for all amounts due the town, including property and excise taxes, interest, water and sewer charges, uh, and expenses arising from the eviction proceedings, uh, our legal costs associated with the tax lien foreclosure, and any other costs that were incurred while the town was in care, custody, and control of the property. Uh, so subsequently, we have issued and recorded at the Registry of Deeds an instrument of redemption. We've taken all of the necessary steps to vacate the tax lien foreclosure judgment that it issued in December of 22. Uh, and we have withdrawn the foreclosure case in Mass Land Court. Uh, you know, also note that work is now well underway at the property. The two-family home is subject to a building permit for a gut uh, renovation both interior and exterior, uh, which means you know the property is again uh, back on the tax rolls after having become uh, exempt while under the town's custody. So obviously this was a you know not only sensitive but long-standing and complicated situation that involved a number of departments and a lot of uh, staff time for you know a largely. Uh, personal but challenging matter, so I'm grateful for all of those who were involved and you know, the board's vote in January, which helped uh, bring this matter to a successful close. <coughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Feeney. Any uh, questions or comments from board members? Um, yeah, I, I just said, wanna, wanna say briefly, and, I, and thank you. I know this was a very long process, and, and while this was pending, the United States Supreme Court had come out with a decision uh, talking about uh, communities not keeping excess equity in, in a home. And, and I want to say through the guidance of Attorney Cunningham and in the work that Mr. Feeney did and, did and, and Attorney Hine before that, the town was never in that position where we were looking for anything more than what was owed through, through, through the taxes. So that was consistent throughout. It was one of those instances where what we were attempting to achieve that the, the Supreme Court approved while we're doing this. So again, thank you for, for your work and in, in, uh, in dealing in, in, with a very sensitive situation. Uh, okay, item 16 is the Select Board and Arlington Redevelopment Board joint meeting follow-up. And um, there was just a few things Mr. Hurd had mentioned, liquor licenses previously, but I just wanted to, we had the meeting last week over in the school committee hearing room with the redevelopment board and there were eight separate matters that we had discussed, several that the redevelopment board wanted to hear from us on and some that we wanted to talk to with the redevelopment board and uh, it ranged from a discussion about the Arlington Heights business district, overnight parking, the potential expansion of parking benefit districts, um, redevelopment board may be looking into an affordable housing overlay at some point, liquor license control, signage enforcement, cannabis licensing, uh, master plan update advisory committee and vacant storefronts. And I, I just wanted to put this on the agenda to um, get some feedback from board members on a couple things we may need to follow up on, but also to state that I thought it was a very productive meeting with the redevelopment board. I think we had individual things that we wanted to discuss. It wasn't a situation where there was like a, a vote for town meeting that one, either the select board or the redevelopment board was looking for endorsement. It was really to, to try to learn some things and, and, and discuss some things. So in that respect, I thought it was very helpful and of particular relevance to the board was the, um, the liquor license control issue. And, and Mr. Hurd had talked about it in terms of restrictions where we have all alcohol licenses, both as to the requirement to purchase food after two drinks and also the number of seats uh, that are required. So 
um, maybe throw that out there, or whatever any member wants to discuss. Um, but I came away from that, that meeting thinking that is certainly something on the liquor license uh, worth looking into further and perhaps taking some action on our policies. Um, so um, anybody like to talk about the meeting in general or this issue? Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, I agree. It was a very good meeting, you know, and I'd like to suggest that maybe you and the chair mean of ARB um, get together and discuss me you know, like concrete next steps on 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 some of the topics that we discuss I mean so that it's really clear who has ownership I mean um, and what we what maybe what some goals are I mean uh, with respect to each of those I think some of them are pretty clear but, but just make sure that we're not like saying they're going to move first and they're thinking that we're going to move first I think we just need to really have a plan for how we're going to set forth on doing some of the things that we think are worth doing from from that meeting so Great suggestion. Thank you. No, thank you. And, and, and one of the things that also has come out of that, and talked to Mr. Feeney about this, had some discussions with Ms. Mar too. There's, there's some things that we're doing here that, that perhaps um, we, we can alter. And, and, um, and, and I think through Mr. Feeney, there's now an ability to provide some communication from the planning department when certain questions or issues come up and, and um, convey that to us. If, if uh, that was mainly in the areas of signage. And, and the, the liquor licenses, and we're going to have a discussion about host community agreements. So I'll, I'll defer that discussion, but on the um, marijuana licenses, because there's a role for the redevelopment board and a role for the select board, and we just have to make sure there's communication. So, um, Mrs. Mahan. <clears throat> um, on this agenda item, and it, and it sort of weaves, parlays into the next agenda item. Um, first, I think um, regarding the alcohol policies around beer and wine, and then some say malt beer and wine or al all alcohol beer and wine. Um, I think um, Mr. Hurd's suggestion perhaps of a subcommittee, certainly I think with Mr. Hurd on it, of, of two members. Um, uh, first, I'd like to make that motion that, that the chair, if it's needed, if you don't need a motion, that's I, Yeah, no, I'm happy, I'm happy okay. to create that. So I, I think that's a, a good way to go. and, and um, Whoever the second member is, it should be the chair, perhaps, or it, it should not be me. Um, so I'm not volunteering, but I think definitely Mr. Hurd. Um, and one of the items that um, I would like uh, some research on, and it doesn't have to be exhaustive or, or anything like that, besides, you know, the two drink minimum with food, which was an original board member's really sticking point to get her to, to vote for it. Um, number of seats, 49, 19, et cetera. Um, but the other issue I'd like the um, subcommittee to discuss, and I don't know if the subcommittee would also cover um, our next uh, agenda item regarding um, cannabis shops and um, host community agreements, but um, I don't know besides the letter of the law, which I would uh, turn to Attorney Cunningham when I do have questions, but regarding does the board want to establish more of a policy which includes what ABCC state law guides us on alcohol and or cannabis regarding um, when this board uh, gives approval to all alcohol licenses and or cannabis um, licenses for establishments if they're um, first, if we can find out legally, if we can say after 12, um, 18, 24 months, we can re-review it and reopen it. Um, and I don't know if I'm expressing myself. I don't know if Attorney Cunningham or the chair can kind of save me on that, but I, if you can understand where I'm going. I know that we gave a license for East Arlington. There was a lot of conversation about it. And it seems to be sort of out there. And I haven't gone into the specifics of why that hasn't moved forward. And there could be things that I don't know about. But um, just where we have the discussion in, in the our planning director, Claire Rucker, um, <laughs> that drives me nuts, um, <laughs> brought up the fact that um, I don't know that she necessarily cited some establishments that um, might avail themselves of that opportunity that it isn't available right now. So um, I guess if I could just ask a quick, quick question to the chair and or through the chair to town council, um, under 
the statute state law regarding um, when we do grant uh, an all alcohol license, as we have in East Arlington, and it's been, I think, well over a year, as well as when we do do our very, very limited portion under the host community agreements regarding cannabis establishments, what does the law afford us in terms of, you know, is it a approval from our end ad infinitum? And then if it's not, if the subcommittee could address putting a timeline on it. But first, um, legally, do, is that something I can ask the subcommittee to look into? Um, Attorney Cunningham, would you like to? Sure, Mrs. Chair. Yeah. Um, question. Sorry. No, it's fine, Ms. Mahan. With regard to alcohol, uh, yes, that is something that the board can consider, uh, depending on the t amount of time given. Um, it would depend in part on the vote and action taken by the board at the time the license was granted. Uh, so we could look back at that particular um, hearing, uh, if there were any conditions placed upon the licensee. Um, but state law is not going to uh, require that a license remain outstanding uh, forever uh, if that licensee does not utilize it. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Mann. Thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Um, okay. Any other comments from members? Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as the board knows, I was out of the country and um, was not at the joint meeting, and I have not yet had time to review the video, but I look forward to doing so. Um, so what I'm about to say is based on limited understanding, um, based on my um, listening to this conversation. But one one thing I would like to say is uh, I'm certainly open as a board member to reconsidering some of our alcohol licensing policies with regard to food service and, and seats. But I would uh, strongly suggest that we do the, have that discussion with input from our Board of Health or our uh, Public Health Department, particularly with uh, comparing what we propose to do with kind of currently accepted best public health standards for alcohol, safe alcohol service. I know that, um, and I know Mrs. Mahan knows the history better, much better than I do, but uh, it's, it's a common strategy in communities to require food service with alcohol as a safety measure. Um, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not taking a position one way or the other, but I think I want to just make sure that we were to make sure we look at that, look at the current best understanding of research. Um, if the board uh, needs, needs some help from my uh, past life and uh, academic uh, public policy work in this area, I could access uh, some folks at a, at a local university that might be able to be helpful with that if we need it. But I think our, it's very likely that our uh, health department staff and our board of health would have that knowledge. So just wanted to kind of put that, insert that in there that I think it's really good to be open to this from an economic development point of view, very much want to help our local businesses and to grow that footprint. But I just want to make sure that we do so uh, in a way that remains conscious of any, of any um, sensible uh, precautions that we might take with respect in regard to safe alcohol service. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Um, I think I think that's part of the, the the subcommittee review once it's once it's created. But a very good point. Um, I also want to talk about one other thing beyond the liquor licenses that we spoke about at the meeting that had to do with vacant storefronts. And, and again, I I saw people at town day and. I had two or three people once again come up to me and ask particularly about that location in the middle of Arlington Center that used to be occupied by Tango. Um, just what's happening? What do we do with vacant storefronts? And we got a little bit of feedback on that, but I, I am going to follow up a little bit more with the town manager um, just in terms of what, if anything, has been received from that landlord in particular, but to some other locations around town too, and, and um, while we don't approve um, I mean, the zoning or special permit authority, um, I do think when there's a concern for, for such a property that, that's so noteworthy, I'm almost getting to the point where I'd like to, to ask that the, the owner to come in here and tell us what what is happening with this property. Like what, what why is there, what are the difficulties and, and, and uh, just, just hear from them because it, it just is a, frankly a continuing source of frustration and I do want to follow up on what responses have been given um, to Ms. Luzai in terms of what's happening with the property and we've had some other properties across town but 
I know this dialogue on, on, di on, on different properties, you know, whether it's property down at Broadway, property up the Heights, or next to CVS, we know this, there's something pending before the redevelopment board on the At Atwood House, but this one, I, I, um, I just seem to, to, to get asked. I know my colleagues do, do as well, so that may be something down the road. I don't anticipate the invitation would be accepted, but I'd, I'd like to extend it and, and, uh, and, and see about that. So. Um, so I had, I don't know if anybody has, has anything else on, on that issue, but that, that was something we didn't have a lot of time to talk about it at the end of the meeting, but I think it's worth continuing to look at. Okay, um, great. So with that, I, th I think that uh, concludes the follow-up and we have some action items and we'll have some more discussion uh, as a board on that. Uh, item 17 is a discussion on host community agreements and specifically with the cannabis and marijuana licenses. Um, Mr. Feeney and Attorney Cunningham, I believe is Attorney Cunningham, or I think both of you are doing this one. Okay. I'll, I'll start, okay. Mr. Chair. Thank you. So uh, as we've now talked about a few times, but perhaps to dove, dive into some specifics, uh, we, uh, excuse me, we, the board has issued uh, three host community agreements to date. Uh, the first was issued by the board to Apothka back in 2019, who operates in Arlington Heights. Uh, the second was issued to Escar, also in 2019, who operates on Broadway in East Arlington. And the third host community agreement, which was the subject of some discussion at our joint meeting, was issued uh, to a company called Calix Peak, uh, and that was executed on, in March of 2022. They had planned to open and operate on Summer Street and what we know as the Finichetti property. So following receipt of their host community agreement, uh, the applicant had subsequently applied for a special permit from the redevelopment board in May of 2023. So a subsequent hearing with the redevelopment board was scheduled for June, but then it was continued on a number of occasions until finally being closed without review on November 1st of 2023. So as I understand it, uh, though I wasn't involved at the time, it was the result of the applicant and landlord uh, needing to resolve issues with uh, the site plan and the use of the parking lot as a whole, as it, has, it serves a, an alternative use as well. So, uh, you know, given the recent discussion that we've had, I took the opportunity to reach out uh, directly to Calix Peak uh, for an update, and I just wanted to let the board know there has been a change in uh, their CEO, but I was able to connect directly with their representative from 10X Strategies, who had been uh, supporting the applicant from day one uh, with their application uh, to this board. So. Uh, what I can report, the latest update was that they had uh, just, just recently uh, developed a new site plan and architectural drawings on September 13th, uh, and those would soon be getting reviewed by the landlord, and if uh, the landlord approved, there would be a new submission for environmental design review uh, forthcoming to the select board. Uh, obviously, not much time has elapsed yet, uh, but to date, no new uh, submission has been received. So uh, what I would say this evening, of course, it's uh, up to the board as the sort of licensing authority here. But if DPCD, if, if planning has not received an application from uh, Calix Peak on or before November 1st, which would be the one-year anniversary of their withdrawing uh, their initial special permit, application you know i would think it would be appropriate for the board at that time and i'd be happy to do it on your behalf to request uh, the applicant to appear at a future upcoming meeting and provide a formal status update uh, so we, and then at that point depending on what that status update is we could discuss next steps or even potentially a timeline for uh, reopening the process as Ms. mahan alluded to uh, previously, I will say there is stated interest from, you know, at least a number of other parties that I've seen reach out to either the select board's office, or the town manager's office, who are looking to operate a uh, dispensary here in Arlington, but we are in fact limited to, via our zoning, our zoning bylaw, three special permits, and we have issued three host community agreements. 
uh, to date. So I just wanted to provide uh, that status update with respect to specific host community agreements. Mr. Chair, if we could allow uh, Mr. Cunningham to talk about sort of the changing uh, regulatory landscape with respect to uh, cannabis control, that would be appreciated. Certainly, thank you, Mr. Feeney. Uh, Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So yes, uh, as the manager mentioned, uh, the state statute was amended in 2022 uh, to make some changes to the uh, enabling legislation, 94, Chapter 94G of the state law, which allows for communities to enter these agreements. Um, it, the regulations were subsequently amended as well to be consistent with the statute in 2023. Um, we entered into our host community agreements with all three vendors prior to those changes. There was some recent legislation, uh, I mean a recent court case in uh, Superior Court where a, a vendor in Haverhill uh, attempted to argue that the changes uh, to the, the, the step that the legislature made would apply retroactively to, uh, to the agreements that were reached with the city. Uh, the court rejected that uh, position and awarded summary judgment for the city on those grounds. So. It, it appears that, at least at this stage, it's only a Superior Court decision, but um, we're on good footing in terms of asserting our rights under the original host community agreements that we entered into. Um, I think that the recommendation made by the manager to, with, with regard to Calix makes good sense. I think maybe to address Mrs. Mahan's concerns as voiced earlier, this is a little bit different than the alcohol situation in that we have a contractual agreement with these parties. So we'd have to consider that and what our options might, what the board's options might be in terms of revocation of that um, the license granted pursuant to that host community agreement and its terms. So I think that engaging with parties that have not been utilizing those licenses would be a good first step to try and uh, resolve these issues. And then with regard to the other, uh, with Apotheca and SCAR, uh, those are very close to uh, running their course, they were, those host community agreements were five-year terms, and the five-year clock began uh, when the first, whenever their establishment opened to the public. So uh, we're in the process of, of looking at that. I've been in contact with the proprietor at ESCAR uh, to try and see if we can you know, come to some preliminary uh, discussion agreements on, on terms related uh, going forward, because those might be expiring. But the Calix is a little different because they have not opened to the public, so the terms of that agreement persist. Great. Thank, thank, thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Any questions or comments from board members? Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, and we'll, we'll look at that uh, proposed timeline um, for, for coming back before the board. Good. All right. Uh, new business, uh, Ms. Martin? No new business. Thank Attorney you. Attorney Cunningham? No new business. Mr. Feeney? No new business. Mr. Diggins? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple items. You know, so. I was hoping that one of you two would talk about town day. You uh, didn't want to take that from you. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm going to leave some for you to be, but I definitely want to, uh, to uh, thank, um, well, everyone who showed up, me, because me, the turnout was really pretty impressive, me, uh, uh, but especially staff, me, and the select board staff, because it's a lot of work. Me, and as I said in my, my um, email, me, me, I get the sense that I don't really even fully appreciate how much other work goes on, me, but what I see is plenty, me, and, uh, man, and it's on top of what they are already doing, you know, and, and um, it's just really pretty phenomenal. And I also want to thank Mr. Hurt for, for um, all of his contributions, you know, to, to the effort, you know. So, um, so yeah, you know, so that was Town Day. And, that, and that's why I laughed, you know, when you asked me, you know, are you going to Town Day? Because, because I was there from, from about 8.30 to 5.30, but those two were there from what, like 6 a.m. until, when did you leave, you know? It's still there. I don't recall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, here all weekend. Yeah. So, so that, that, there's that, and then, um, and then the, the second thing is, um, uh, uh, I am, I am now the town manager's uh, designee uh, to the poet laureate uh, selection committee. Meet, um, and so, so I've arrived. I have arrived. You know, that's why I, I told the, the, the gentleman earlier that you know, we are looking for a new poet laureate. You know? uh, so we're taking applications. And so I say that to, to the public who's going to be watching this. I mean, I'm sure you know, on um, YouTube at some point apply. You have until like January 5th to apply. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins, and congratulations.
<laughs> Mrs. Mahan. Oh, a designee. That sounds like a, such a good idea. Um, I, I, no, since I had so much new business at the last meeting, and um, poor Mr. Helmuth had to leave the country so he didn't have to suffer through it, um, a large part of it was um, Al Wife, Brooke, and DCR, and I'm going to save that for um, an October meeting when I have more of an update, um, and everyone will have to suffer through it. No, I'm only kidding. Except for that, I do know that the Mystic River Watershed and Save the Alwife Brook are very grateful in terms of this board leadership and all of my colleagues, as well as the town manager and department heads, um, for keeping the issue in the forefront and actually coming through with some action plans. So that's it. Thank, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd? Thank you. I, too, want to thank everyone that was involved, certainly the town staff. That, you know, we say this year after year, but there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work that goes into town meeting, at the town day that you don't see. My son on Saturday said, you, you stupid people, why would you schedule town day when it's going to rain? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, we start planning like eight months in advance, so it's not really clear what the weather is going to be on that day. And then people say, oh, well, why don't you just reschedule for the next day? It's like it's an impossibility with every, all the moving parts of Town Day. But, you know, I do want to thank all the staff that was involved. And certainly Mr. Diggins, me, me and Mr. Diggins both serve on the uh, committee formerly known as the Town Day Committee, that, <laughs> the committee without a name at this point. Um, but my time constraints have made it so Mr. Diggins takes the lion's share of the uh, – the select board contributions to the committee and so I certainly want to thank him for that and my hockey schedule seems to get tighter and tighter every time there's a town day we had a rough morning for the herd boys so we would have rather been at town day than the games we were at but we did get to come back for a town night which was good and, it was, and given that it was pretty steadily raining it was a really amazing turnout to see the fireworks the Elks had their event and there was a number of kids on the at the boys club including my two boys getting shaving cream so it's kind of full circle moment because that's what i used to do on town night um but you know we were in arlington center for dinner and there was you know a lot of the businesses were were busy so i think it kind of you know it was a successful run of town day and putting the fireworks at the end of the day i think helped um so and i want to thank everyone that came out i heard there was a great crowd at Town Day, notwithstanding the weather. Um, so it's clear that Arlington residents enjoy their Town Day, rain, rain or shine, and uh, it's glad to to uh, have been a part of it. So maybe next year we'll talk about whether or not we want to move it to June or <laughs> a, a, a more comfortable month that might uh, have less likeliness of rains, and given that it's rained two years in a row after about a month of sunshine, <laughs> but it is what it is. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. No new business, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, thank you. I have a couple of items, and, and first of all, I wanna thank uh, the, the people here, Mr. Hurd, Mr. Diggins, Ms. Mar, Mr. Feeney, for, for all the work that you did on Town Day, and, and uh, I was there for a good part of the day, uh, in the morning into the afternoon, and, and it's just amazing how many people showed up in, in, in the rain. It's just a great event. You feel so good about the town of Arlington when you see all the different groups and, and in between businesses, local groups, and, and um, it, just being able to, to, to see people. And I want to thank Ms. Marr and Mr. Diggins talked about the different things you have to do at the last minute, and there was an issue that had come up with the Zero Waste Committee um, they were providing a service at Town Day, providing water, and there was an issue on their location. I actually spoke to them, um, and, and you helped them get through that, get a good location, and I understand you're going to talk to them shortly about what, what's going on next year. And that, that type of flexibility is really hard because there's over 200 booths, so really appreciate your work there. Mr. Feeney, at one point, uh, Mary and I were here after speaking downstairs and you came running in, there was an issue, I think with the pony rides or something, and you were running around and, and just appreciate everything that, that, that you did hands on. Um, I wanna thank our police department, DPW, the, the fire, uh, we had a, the, the Coast Guard was there with a special event. So there was just so many people that we saw. I also wanna 
thank Congresswoman Catherine Clark, who came um, to Dante and spent a fair amount of time at, at various booths, and we appreciate her uh, coming back to the district and, and, and visiting, visiting the booth. So that, that was just a great, great day, and culminating with fireworks that uh, even in the rain and with cloud cover, they were still great. So the second thing I wanted to bring up is, and this, this is just a follow-up, um, you may remember back on our August 19th meeting, we had two new members of the Council on Aging that unfortunately our agenda ran late. They had to leave. Mm. Last Thursday was the first meeting of the Council on Aging since last June. I attended the meeting as liaison to express my apologies for not reaching them before they had to leave. It was Marie Raposa and Elaine McNulty Knight. Um, I offered to bring them back because we wanted to thank them for their service, but they were um, said they were they were good. They <laughs> appreciated us, us asking that, but I, I, um, that that has been very enjoyable working on that committee. And, and another member, Jim Munsey, who we we just appointed to the board, pointed out a signage issue that I'm going to bring up with Mr. Feeney about inconsistency between a senior center designation on the corner of Academy and Mass Ave in our community center. Um, in, in, in just an update thing, but I appreciate it as a new member. He, he, he brought handouts and, and uh, made a lot of sense on a potential change that we might make. So um, just wanted to get back to everybody on that. So that's, that's all I have for new business. Um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay, a motion to adjourn made by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Unanimous vote. Great. Thank you, Larry. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. ACMI Productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.